this is Dr. Jonathan Hall coming to you from the North Shore of Boston with another Thoughtful Patient's Guide to Plastic Surgery. Today I'd like to talk to you about a hot topic that's been in the news recently, uh, Breast Implant Associated Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma, or BIA-ALCL. So this past weekend, the New York Times had an article about Breast Implant Associated ALCL with the headline, a shocking diagnosis, breast implants gave me cancer. This was an important topic at the American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons National Conference that I just attended in San Diego last week and I would like to summarize the latest findings by experts from around the world who have just presented them to us. First of all, breast implant associated ALCL is not new, it was first described in 1985. Although it is a rare cancer, it is associated with a common procedure, the use of breast implants in augmentation or reconstruction. So there are a lot of people who might be concerned about this. I'm pleased to say that the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, the American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons, and the International Society of, Plastic, of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons have taken this very seriously and have been funding research and studies over the last few years. So the actual numbers of patients involved keep changing. There are now 457 confirmed cases of breast implant associated ALCL around the world, which includes the 359 cases from around the world that have been reported to our FDA. This number was according to Dr. Anand Deva, who is a plastic surgeon and professor from Australia, who has been a leading researcher on both biofilm and now on breast implant associated ALCL who spoke. I'll have more about the interesting connection between biofilm and breast implant associated ALCL in a minute. First of all, how worried should you be? 457 cases out of millions of women who have had breast implants around the world. But there have been 12 deaths, nine of them in the United States. The micromort perspective. Uh, so a uh, talk was given at the meeting on micromorts to help us understand the relative risk. So a micromort is one way to understand this. It's a unit of risk defined as a one in million chance of death. So this concept can help us to compare high risk in everyday activities like skydiving, mountaineering, riding a bicycle 10 miles, smoking a pack of cigarettes. So here are activities that increase your risk of dying by one in a million or one micromort. And I was surprised by some of them. So it turns out if you drink a half a liter of wine, which is 16.92 ounces, I looked it up, which is equivalent to just over three typical five ounce glasses of wine, that increases your risk of dying by one in a million. Eating 40 tablespoons of peanut butter increases your risk of dying by one in a million. Walking 17 miles, driving 250 miles by car or flying uh, a thousand miles by airplane or jet. So a patient that develops anaplastic large cell lymphoma which is not associated with breast implants has a risk of 1.24 micromorts per year or 46 in a lifetime. So 1.24 out of a million uh, chance in a year of 46 on a chance in a lifetime of dying. Uh, so this is non-breast implant associated ALCL. So compare this to other diseases, basal cell carcinoma, which is a common skin cancer that we treat in the office, has a 6.17 micromorts per year, or 228 micromorts per lifetime. And colon cancer, which we know is worse, has 152 micromorts per year, and 5,624 micromorts per lifetime of dying. So. So what is the risk of contracting and dying from breast implant ALCL for a woman with breast implants? So the lifetime risk of a woman with bilateral breast implants dying from breast implant associated ALCL is 0.34 micromorts. So by comparison, skiing one day in the United States has twice the risk, or 0.77 micromorts, traveling in a car 230 miles, or drinking that three glasses of wine just one time uh, carries a three time micromort risk compared to breast implant associated ALCL. So a woman who has bilateral breast implants for either augmentation or breast cancer reconstruction 
has a lifetime risk of contracting and dying from breast implant associated ALCL that is half the risk of skiing for one day in the United States or one third the risk of drinking three glasses of wine, walking 17 miles or riding a car 250 miles just one time. So that kind of helped me to understand this and I'm personally breathing a little bit easier understanding the actual risk and I think this is one good way for me to, under, to explain this to my patients so that they can understand the risk. The next part is going to be titled Genetics, Texture, Bacteria, and Time. So the best current theory of how breast implant associated ALCL happens is the malignant transformation of immune cells responding to biofilm. So it is thought that the normal white blood cells that respond to infection in our body can be transformed into cancer, self, cancer cells after years of chronic stimulation by biofilm. Now biofilm is where the bacteria can wall themselves off by secreting a kind of shell so that the body can't fight them. So when you go to the dentist, the tartar that the dentist scrapes off of our teeth is a biofilm. Uh, biofilm has been linked pretty strongly to capsular contracture, which is a condition where scar tissue tightens around the implant and the implants become hard. So we've been focused on ways to avoid biofilm uh, to avoid capsular contracture for many years. Some of you have may, may have seen my other video explaining the methods that are used to avoid biofilm at the time of breast augmentation. It turns out that avoiding biofilm may also be one of the main keys to avoiding breast implant associated ALCL. Genetics may also play a part. There have been almost no case reports uh, in the continent of Asia or in Asian patients in other countries of breast implant associated ALCL. Asian patients also have a lower risk of other kinds of lymphoma and we don't really know the reason. So there's a genetic component to breast implant associated ALCL as well. So to summarize, bacterial contamination uh, causes a biofilm which leads to chronic inflammation which over years can lead to breast implant associated ALCL. So bacteria are bad and more bacteria are worse. So what's that thing with texture? So you may have heard that textured implants have been associated with breast implant associated ALCL. In fact, there have been no cases where only smooth implants have been used. Um, in the few cases where uh, breast implant associated ALCL developed with smooth implants, the patients that had textured tissue expanders or textured implants in place before. So why is texture thought to be a problem? Texture has more surface area for the bacteria to attach to and the majority of the cases have been with the texture found on the Allergan implants. This is a more aggressive texture using a salt loss method where salt is used to coat the implant during the process of manufacturing the implant and after the silicone is deposited the salt is uh, dissolved so it's a very aggressive texture. This texture is significantly more surface area than the mentor texture for example where they simply stamp a texture in the implant. So the stamped texture does not have as many nooks and crannies for bacteria to attach to, less surface area. So Dr. Anand Deva, again from Australia, spoke at our meeting and he said that in Australia 90% of the breast implants used have been textured implants versus about 12.7% of the implants in the United States. So he has had a lot of textured implants to research in Australia. He was able to do a study that shows that the Allergan biocell surface has 14 times the risk of the mentor siltex surface of developing breast implant associated ALCL. So again, there are no reported cases with smooth implants alone and the majority of cases have been with the aggressive texture. So the question comes up, do we need to stop using texture breast implants? Uh, the various speakers have said no. Texture can prevent the rotation of shaped implants and may decrease the shifting of smooth implants with time but it makes sense to be more selective in its use and if needed use the less aggressively textured devices. So what should you do if you develop a sudden swelling of your breast more than 12 months after surgery? Okay. So this may be a fluid collection around your implant. So the first thing to do is see a plastic surgeon. He or she will send you to interventional radiology where under ultrasound guidance the fluid collection around your implant will be removed with a small needle and sent for testing the fluid will be tested for a cell marker called CD30. If this is positive, then you will get a PET scan to look for solid tumors. 
and see an oncologist. But please don't panic. In the rare case that you do have breast implant associated ALCL, Dr. Mark Clemens, a plastic surgeon from MD Anderson, reported that it has been successfully treated in all cases with removal of the implant and the capsule of tissue around the implant. This procedure is done by a plastic surgeon. It's called a total capsulectomy. Yes, there have been 12 deaths reported worldwide from breast implant associated ALCL, but all deaths, and nine of these were in the United States, but all deaths resulted from cases with incomplete surgical treatment. A total capsulectomy was not performed. Because this is a rare condition, early cases were not always recognized and treatment guidelines had not yet been developed because of the small numbers. Dr. Clemens reported that MD Anderson now has treated 38 cases with total capsulectomy and the treatment has been so successful that they now feel confident allowing the women to have breast implants replaced at the same time. So they're putting smooth implants back in at the same time. And Dr. Clemens also reported that Rentuximab, which is a chemotherapy agent that targets CD30 and is also used in Hodgkin's lymphoma, has led to complete remissions in those rare cases that were not treated early with total capsulectomy and had developed metastases. So that is really good news. So the risk of developing breast implant associated ALCL for women with breast implants is still thankfully quite low and the risk of death is even less. There have been, again, no reported deaths when the current treatment guidelines have been followed. Again, using the micromort analysis, a woman who has bilateral breast implants has a lifetime risk of contracting and dying from breast implant associated ALCL. It is half the risk of dying from skiing for one day in the U.S., or half the risk of dying from drinking, or one third the risk, rather, of dying from drinking three glasses of wine walking 17 miles or riding a car 250 miles, again, just one time. So what's your action plan? What should you do if you're thinking about breast implants for the first time? Well, the first is to find a board-certified plastic surgeon who will help guide you through the decision-making process and understanding the various trade-offs of breast augmentation and what may be best in your case. If texture is worth the trade-off in your case, understand the differences with the different textures. When the use of texture is indicated, I prefer the less aggressively textured implants. And, and understand what your surgeon is doing to decrease the risk of biofilm. Again, it is now thought that you need biofilm over a period of time to develop breast implant associated LCL. So it is also important to avoid biofilm to decrease your risk of capsular contracture. So this has been Dr. Jonathan Hall coming to you from the North Shore of Boston with another thoughtful patient's guide to plastic surgery. Today we've talked about a hot topic, breast implant associated ALCL, which has been in the news recently, and I hope this helps you to understand this better. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about how you can avoid biofilm and capsular contracture, uh, I have another video in my Thoughtful Patients Guide that talks about methods that are currently used for this. Thanks for listening.